People's faith, it has a way of putting a spark back into your mind. It has a way to awaken you from things that you are going to sleep with. Amen. But reassurance, God has to do it all the way through the Bible just to try to get you not to forget what I told you. I have to reassure it. So just in case it slipped through your mind, I've got to bring it back to you. Just in case something happened, it looked like you detoured from where God declared sometimes God has got to reassure us that it's going to be all right don't worry about it amen if I said it I will perform it if I called it out I would I would do it can somebody shout glory in here in other words it needs it you know why we need an assurance is because of the fact that many of us in here in our past event we have had struggles Anybody had struggles? I've had struggles. Amen. Sometimes people look at us, they can't see what we've been through. And sometimes we have a way of hiding things that we're going through with, things that we're troubled with. Sometimes we come in here with a smile, but y'all know that underneath that smile, there's a whole lot of struggling that have been there. Sometimes they don't even know how hard it was for you to get to church today. And sometimes people will look at you and criticize because they don't know they took you all that you had just to put your clothes on because you've been so heavily weighed down with things. You've been going through things so much that sometimes you just need to understand it's hard for me to believe that there is some things better. In other words, the writer brings this out in the text because he speaks to us and he makes transparent thoughts, amen, in the minds of people. It is hard when you had some struggles in your life. It's hard to think things are going to be better when you've had some failures that have showed up on the inside of you. Things that you did not do like you're supposed to have done. It's hard to believe that there is a future when there are challenges all around. Challenges. I gotta challenge myself. There's challenges where things are trying to make you do more than you're able to do. Trying to make you give more than what you got. In other words, it's hard for people to embrace some things that the Lord has declared to you. It's because there's so much going on that don't look like it's going to happen. There's so much going on that look like there is no sign or evidence that God is going to turn this thing around. God's going to bless you. God's going to turn around and make your enemy your footstools. It is hard for people to believe when you've been in a place for a long time that you're and you've been standing still for a long time. It's hard to believe that God got something great in store for you. God going to do some things that you never thought he's going to do. And so the writer, amen, Isaiah, had to deal with that because he had to try to comfort you. Amen, everybody knows comforting is what I need. I need somebody to push me sometimes. Every now and then, you need members to encourage you sometimes. Touch somebody. Somebody said, every now and then, I don't need you to talk about me, but I just need you to encourage me. I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to hold out. But every now and then, you need somebody to say, it's going to be all right. Just hold on. I can see help on the way. I can see God is working this thing out. Everybody needs some encouragement. I don't know whether y'all believe it or not. Amen. But everybody needs somebody to tell them it's going to be better. Amen. Just hold out. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't go back. It's always telling you just, just, just wait another day just hold on just a little while longer and the Lord is going to make a way somehow anybody believe that shout glory in other words he comforted us he comforted us the reason why he comforted us so fear would not prevent us from achieving the goals that God has declared unto us he tries to comfort us amen because he knows that people are backing up people are giving up in this last day can I be real with some of y'all? There are Holy Ghost folk, folks that is in the church. Give up, amen. And some of them seem like they're hanging by the hand. Amen. Just hanging in here. Just trying to make it. But they have a little faith inside of them that says things has got to change. God is not going to let things go like that. God is not going to let the enemy steal his glory nor snatch the people people of God. Amen. Out of his hand, somebody got to shout glory to that. In other words, everybody knows 
that God is writing through this prophet because he's trying to tell you in order for you to know that I'm in I'm, I'm doing what I said he says now I'm trying to comfort you because I am in control of history God is in control of everything that you're going through God is in control of any problem any situation the Lord is in control of any kind of attack on your life any kind of enemy that comes up against you the Lord is in control amen of where you live where you eat whether or not you survive God is in control of every aspect of your life in other words that all to give you some confidence that can't nobody beat the Lord can nobody override God if he says something hey, nobody can override him and find him that he's not able to do it but tell somebody he is able amen and shout glory in here and shout hallelujah He's hallelujah. In other words, Isaiah had to do that. Do you understand that you can, you can be in church, but you can be so, amen, frustrated, and uh, you can just lose focus on what God is getting ready to do for you. You can get so caught up and distracted by things. Uh, look like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, look like there is no door that's getting ready to open unto you. And so God says, I'm in control. Don't y'all worry about it. It. Because anything that I declare and decree unto the child of God, he said, I'm in control. I can make it happen. I can make it come just like I said. I'm in control of it. In other words, Isaiah writes in the text that have you not known? Have you not heard? Have it not been told to you from the very beginning? In other words, what he says, haven't you understand from the foundation of the earth uh, that the Lord said it on the syndrome of the earth and every inhabitant looked like a grasshopper. In other words, he told me to tell you that I sit on top of everything. I can see everything that is going on. And I don't care who the attacker is. There ain't nothing but look like a grasshopper compared to me. I got no power in heaven and in earth. I got everything I need because I'm in control of it. In other words, I tried to comfort them by presenting the power of the Lord, amen, operating in behalf of every child of God. Tell somebody right around you, say, do you know that God is in control of your life? Amen. Do you know that God amen, has a sense about everything amen, that comes up in your life? Do you know that there is nothing too hard for God? witness in him. I wish I had somebody. Amen. And be encouraged because God told me to tell you. Amen. Don't let no distractions come up in your mind. Yeah. that I'm giving you a personal confirmation. I'm trying to make you understand that if you believe in me, I'm giving you a personal confirmation that I am the Lord. They know I said he is the Lord. And so what he does, he confirms and he brings security in the minds of the people because the more I know, the more confidence I have, the more I recognize his power, the more confidence that I have. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen if the Lord is able to deliver, if God is able to bless. And so what he does in the text here, he writes to the people of God, just in case you didn't know, just in case you're thinking failure, just in case you don't believe that it can 
it be done. The Lord come back and said, I will lean over and tell somebody right around you. He said, I will. In other words, somehow little words don't seem so much until you dig into the understanding of it. When God said, I will, he's really expressing an inedible event that cannot change. If he said, I will, that means there's something positive and something, amen, certain is going to happen to you. If God said, I will, don't overlook that word because then he says something that I'm trying to tell you that I'm able and that I'm willing to do it regardless of the natural or the unusual. He said, when I say I will, I'm expressing power to control anything that I ever said that I need to control. When he says I will, what he's doing in the text, he said, I can direct the outcome despite of the difficulties that you have. Listen now, don't go beyond what I'm saying. A simple word that them pack with power. A simple word that should never leave them thinking about failure anymore. That two words have a way of changing your life and make you feel like running through troops and leaving all the walls. When he says, I will, is a decision of what I'm going to do. Amen. God said, if I'm going to do it, then it's got to happen because I said, and I'm going to do it. When he uses the word, I will, tell him it's a positive statement that comes from a word of a man that binds himself that I'm going to do it myself. In other words, can I talk to you just a minute? When God says, I will, that means that I bind myself. I'm not going to leave it in the hands of nobody else to do it. He said, I will do it myself. I don't worry about anybody else needing to help me. Because he said, I'm going to do it myself. In other words, that means your help.
you see uh, where it comes from uh, and from whose mouth that it come out of. Uh, in other words, if I could bring it down to you, uh, I found ahead, out that there's a difference uh, between the word that says I will uh, and I He said, I will and I shall. Sometimes we always think that they are the same. But can I break it down to a Holy Ghost filled people? Look at somebody right around you and say, Both of them are positive things that says what's going to happen. When I say I shall and when I say I will, they both. But what you got to understand uh, is sometimes they are interchangeable uh, and then sometimes they are not. Uh, Lino would tell them sometimes they sound like uh, I can say them the same way uh, and get the same results. Uh, but what I found out about a word, uh, you got to find out how it's used uh, in the context of the scripture. In other words, sometimes uh, we just run things together. Uh, but God said these words are too important uh, to every child of God. Uh, and every man, you got to know what he's saying. Uh, and so what he told me to tell somebody, uh, he said, when you say, I will, uh, it speaks of something different. Uh, because any time that God says, I will, uh, he's speaking about his uh, a man that's anticipated uh, outcome for anybody that he attended it to. Uh, can I break it down to you? Uh, if I say I will, uh, I'm expressing the intentions of God uh, that anticipate an outcome. Uh, in other words, he said, when I say I will, uh, I'm telling you right now what my mind and my plan uh, is a man for an in other words, if I could break it down just a little bit, uh, have y'all ever read when Jeremiah uh, chapters number 29 says, uh, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Uh, he said, my thoughts are not uh, evil, but they are to an expected end. Uh, if you read it again, uh, it was in my thoughts, uh, Tell somebody, don't go to sleep. Because I'm getting ready to tell you the conclusion of it. In other words, what he's trying to tell me, that when you say, I will, that means God has ordained it. It's got to come true if God has ordained it. It is like when God says, I will do something. What he's really trying to tell the church, he said, I'm willing it to you. Whatever I said, I willed it to you. That's why everybody in here ought to shout. Uh, because there's got to be something coming. Uh, if God has willed it to you. If God has willed the future. Uh, there's got to be a future coming. Uh, if God has willed uh, a promise in your life. Uh, the promise has got to come. Uh, so look at something.
what he want to do. Uh, and so he uses the expression will uh, and shall. But he said sometimes uh, it cannot be interchangeable. Uh, because you got to have an understanding of what it is. Uh, because sometimes there's a slight difference uh, in will and shall. Uh, lean over and say will and shall. Uh, I want y'all to hear that word coming out of your mouth. Uh, look at him and say, God said I will. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. Look at him again. And said, whatever God said, he said, I will. And I shall. In other words, when he said there is a slight difference, when God uses it in the physiology that he uses. Can I give y'all an example? Look at him and said, have you understood that there was a person in the Bible that had a son that was sick? And he went to Jesus and what he says, uh, that if thou can do uh, anything, he said, well, I want you uh, to heal my son. Uh, Y'all heard that in there, right? Uh, he said, if thou can do anything, uh, he said, I want you to heal my son. Uh, Jesus come back and replied, uh, hey amen, if thou can believe, uh, he said, all things are possible. Uh, now, because now it seems like uh, it's not a contradictory statement uh, when you ask God can you uh, you're really indicting his powers uh, however can tell God uh, or ask God can you do anything uh, that's a right and say my God uh, amen. is there anything too hard for him uh, in other words when you go to God uh, you should never ask God uh, what do you mean can I do it uh, I hung the earth out on nothing uh, what do you mean that can I do it uh, I breathed in the nostrils of a man uh, that was made with dust and he came up looking like me uh, what do you mean can I do it uh, in other words tell somebody right around uh, that there are some times we gotta watch how we pray uh, because we don't always get the answer uh, because we all don't give him the glory and the praise. Uh, so your prayer should be like this. Uh, never ask God, can you do it? Uh, he said, tell me, will you do it? Uh, lean over and tell him, will you do it? Uh, when you say, will you do it? Uh, you said, I'm expressing uh, that I know you got power, but will you heal me? Uh, I know that you are deliverer, uh, but will you bring me out of it? Uh, in other words, a language change. Uh, and what God is trying to tell you, uh, that in the book of Isaiah, uh, the writer put it into a plain terms. Uh, what he says in the text, uh, he said, I will. Uh, amen, I will. Uh, I'll make the darkness light. Uh, he said, I will. Uh, I'll bring you out through dry places. Uh, he said, I of that is uh, when he says I will uh, tell somebody it's what uh, God say he gonna do uh, and when you say uh, he shall uh, tell him that's what you're gonna get uh, in other words what he trying to tell you uh, every time God say I will uh, that's what he said he gonna do uh, but when he says I shall uh, that means that's what you're going to receive uh, can I it down to you. Uh, look at somebody right around you uh, and say you don't understand that. Uh, let me try it one more time. Uh, when he says I will, uh, look at him and say that's God. Uh, but when he says I shall, uh, that's what I'm going to keep. Uh, everybody ought to raise your voice uh, and say God said I will. Uh, that means I shall. Uh, if you will Uh, and I know that there might be some tears uh, that come up 
up in your life. He never dies trying to seal it with a personal confirmation that you don't have to worry about it because I will. I'll be there. I will. I will help you. In other words, he brings it out in the text because some of us need to know that he's talking about future. He's talking about folk not afraid. They step out on something that they never stepped out on for. He said, I know that there are some people in here that look afraid to reach beyond their boundaries and press past the problem that they have. He knows that there is somebody in him that has had failures in their life and they got doubts about their future. They won't step out, they won't believe him. And they stay in the same condition, stay in the same shape. But he said, I have to make sure that I can encourage you by saying, I will. I'm taking it away from you. Uh, 